All right, Todd and Tate are back. We're gonna do our new video. Our video is true ups. We probably get more true up questions than any other question, hands, hands down. And, and we wanna take a minute and explain what a true up bill is, okay? Basically a true up bill is where you have, at the end of the year, you have to pay pg &E. Now, there's only three situations that this would happen. The first situation, we didn't build enough, a big enough system, meaning you need 10,000 kilowatt hours. We built you a system only for 6,000. Why would we do that? The only reason we would do that was a couple of reasons. It would be, uh, you didn't have enough uh, roof space. Um, you know, you didn't want to buy that big of a system. So we shot to tier shape, meaning we're just going to cover the most expensive portion of the bill. It's rare. I don't do it very often. The only time I really do it is if they don't have roof space. I'd say most of the time it's roof space. Yeah, other okay. companies would probably be an Yeah, I mean, other companies, they do what they want. You're getting what, how I sell it and how Tate thinks it should be sold. So that's very different. No, it's very, different. yeah, whatever. But <laughs> I sell it pretty close to them. So number two, the second situation is something broke. Um, you know, a tree landed on it. Uh, you squirrels know, get in squirrels there. get in it. You have a power outage and a breaker blows. Those situations that would basically turn your system off for a month and all of a sudden you have a true bill because you didn't have a month of production that you need. And then the third one, which I find, I, for me personally, because I spent a lot of time and he's been pushing this crap down my head for the last seven years, this is the thing that happens the most. Clients build a system that covers 10,000 kilowatt hours, and then they buy a Tesla, or their parents move in and there's an RV hooked up to it, and all of a sudden they're using 15,000 kilowatt hours. That's probably personally the number one thing that happens to me is they just start using more power. And so we as salesmen need to teach them how this works. And I'd like to explain this in the beginning of the, of the sale so that they really understand what is a true of bill. I don't guarantee um, a system size, like a six kilowatt will cover everything that they use. No, I guarantee a production. Meaning if I say the system's gonna produce 8,000, that's what it's gonna produce. Not that the system's gonna cover everything that I use. We need to make sure that we distinguish which situation it is so we can better help our clients, okay? So Tate's gonna kind of go into a little bit of how that kind of works and how we can avoid it. Yeah, Todd's gonna give you the super easy sim the situation at the bottom. I'm gonna give you the slightly more technical for the guys who like more technical. Okay, then let me go first then. Okay, so our power is like this, guys. We use more in the summer, less in the winter. If we build the system right, we're gonna produce enough to overproduce in the summer to offset our winter hours. So as long as our total- Or nighttime users. Or nighttime users. Again, I'm looking at an overall year. If you use 10,000, my system produces 10,000, you don't have a true bill, okay? Or you, I build a system for 10,000, you use uh, you use 15,000 and you have a true bill. So that's the oversimplification of it. Now, Tate can explain the, you know, the lines. <laughs> so yes, so, Real simple, we want to produce a little bit more during the day so that we can cover the nights, okay? So what that means is I have a solar system, it produces continuously all through the day, roughly six hours on average. Remember, we have to use averages over a year, we can't do moments. Six kilowatt hours a day. Yeah, so this is gonna do 4,000 watts at any one time. And this is a generic system. This is just what we're using for easy math. So yours may be, 3,000, maybe 10,000. Is this an inverter or is this a system size? This is would be what the inverters are in pro, you know, doing right now. So inverters, if it was in phase, inverter, if it was doing solar. Right, so this is a 4,000 watt inverter. Exactly. Well, it'd be 4,000 production. Production, what it's actually producing. It's horsepower to the ground. Got it. Okay. okay. Then we have like our AC and we always use AC because that's usually our biggest item that jumps up. And then we have our baseline of what the house is using at any one time. So if I walk up to a house right now that doesn't have anything on, but the TV's plugged in, the refrigerator's plugged in, they got the coffee maker in, those items roughly run about 1,000 watts, and you usually do about one kilowatt an hour or 1,000 watts per hour, okay? So we know that that's kind of where the start is. Where that is, if I walk into it nighttime, daytime, it's all gonna be basically the same. Through the day, you're gonna have items kick on and we're just gonna use AC here. Those items kick on really hard, and then they dive off really hard. So we may have an AC that kicks on to 8,000 watts, and then it dives way off down here to nothing, down the baseline when just the blower's on, and then it kicks back on to AC and back down a baseline, and that does that as it gets all the way through the night. Or my wife, way up here, please. <laughs> yeah, 32 degrees. 32 degrees. That's where it's gonna be, that's okay. 
So what that means is all through the day, my solar is producing, producing, producing about six hours continuously, sometimes more in the winter, uh, the summertime, a little less in the, in the afternoon, but that's what it's gonna do. And then at night, it's gonna cut off. So what happens at night? We have no solar, we have to have something to back that up. Well, if we design the system properly, as it jumps way up here, we're buying from PG, but the good part happens right after it kicks off. So as soon as it kicks off and goes down to baseline, remember we're using a thousand watts in the house, we're producing 4,000, I'm pushing 3,000 watts back to the energy provider, SEE, you know, uh, pg &E, or our battery. Yeah, okay. Now, if we're using a battery, this is where batteries come in and we're pushing all that power back into them. So what can we do with it? We're gonna take that power back at night. Now, if we're doing, now this is kind of where, it, real simple, you know, we're using lots of power during the day. As soon as it turns off, we push back to our battery. And at night, when we need that power, we bring it back in. So we grab from our battery or from pg &E or SEE or whatever that may, energy provider may be. Now, this is where we see the EV charging craziness. Yes. This is where people don't understand that your EV charger, AC, somewhere around 8,000 watts, your EV charger can goes continuously all night long at 12,000 watts. Because it's it's trying to suck as much power as possible until it's full. Shove it into those batteries. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Now for that, you're gonna have, you may, if you don't incorporate that in the beginning, and you add that later, that's where we get into normally our big issues with true bills is items that were added. Yeah, it's true. Question, are we gonna, we're gonna have an EV video, right? We, we are. Play. So we're gonna go into EVs a little bit more in depth because EVs are, you can't just chuck on a panel. There's an accurate calculation that you have to figure out. Just like if you were trying to budget how much gas you buy. Or Same how big a battery. Or how much big battery. You know? This is just our baseline. And remember guys, after that engineering three, it's gonna be mostly pushing to the battery. Exactly. If you bought a system that was before net energy metering, if you were in the 2.0, then it has to do with pushing power into your uh, into the utility. Grid. The grid, because yeah, we get good uh, buybacks with this. Um, Tate, just a quick question. Would you recommend, if you had an EV charger, that would happen, it's, it's crazy. If you got an EV charger, would you try to, if you possible, would you try to uh, charge during the day? Would that be better or worse, in your opinion? I'm kind of curious. If it matters so if i didn't have batteries yeah so let's say that i was a nurse or whatever that is i just use nurse i have lots of friends who are nurses yeah and they work at nighttime yeah so their cars set stagnant and daytime yeah that's your best charging during the daytime of course because you're pulling directly from them correct if i have a battery though and i've sized the battery properly if i do it at night and it goes over what my battery can do the EV charger goes on the grid, but that's the cheapest time to buy. Perfect. Okay, gotcha. That's good. We can go into that more. I was just curious. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much we have all for this one, right? I think so. I think we can, um, you know, yeah. So Hopefully, you guys, you know, ask questions. Definitely, we can't answer questions we don't get. Yes. And so, thanks again for seeing Todd and Ty. Remember, subscribe <laughs> to uh, Yep, That's Todd.